Get out of the cities, folks. I've been saying it to people I know for months, maybe a year now, and I myself was able to get out of the city uh, a few months ago, uh, headed south when New York City itself was headed south. The, the businesses are closed. Crime is on the rise. We've released these homeless people into the streets. They're attacking people. It's like Mad Max. It's like Gotham City out there. No thank you. Okay? So if you can and you are able to and you are able to work maybe remote or even if you're not, is it worth your life? Just get out. I don't see anything being done about this right now. I mean, let's be clear. So we saw cities across America last year with this whole defund the police wave, right? Defund the police, or they'd be like, oh, I don't really mean defund the police. Maybe we just reallocate some funds. <laughs> no. Anybody that says defund the police to me, I automatically must think, oh, you are a moron. Because the first time you find yourself in trouble, they will be the first person you will call when you are in trouble. All right. We know New York City cut over $400 million from its police budget in 2020, while activists were calling for a full billion-dollar cut, uh, which never happened. But still, I think it was $424 million they cut from the budget. You think that has no effect on uh, the lack of beat cops, the lack of a police presence in the city at all? Criminals are more brazen than ever because they know they can get away with this because the police aren't around and if they are there they don't want to stop them because they're too afraid of being fired for doing their jobs nowadays because they think they'll be called bigots what if something were to go wrong what if they had to shoot someone to protect themselves or protect others their jobs would be gone and who knows they might get charged with murder and put on trial in front of the country so, yeah, I would say it has something to do with the rise in crime in uh, cities across America. Let's take a look at crime in New York City, okay? You can find these at compstat.nypdonline.org, okay? This is where they have all their little statistics. You can go week-to-date, which is uh, not what I'm using. I'm actually going to look at the year-to-date stats. Uh, week-to-date is this week, uh, you know, this time last year by the week. So we're going to do year-to-date, all right? Now, I've already got some of these written out for you. You can go and take a look at these so you know I'm not lying to you. This is this is the truth. So murder is up 0.7% uh, from this time last year. Felony assault is up 5.4%. Shootings are up 10.7%. Shooting victims are up 7%. Rape, yeah. Rape from uh, this time last year is up 7.7%. And all other sex crimes, let me pull that up here, all sex crimes excluding rape are up 26.3%. And then this is a funny one. Let's actually go back here. Let's look at this. So when you go here and you go to hate crimes, hate crimes are apparently up 98.9%. Now, I have to look more into these to see who's committing these crimes, get more details, but you see a lot of, uh, you see a lot of uh, uh, aggravated harassment, you see a lot of assault, and you see some unclassifieds. I don't know what the unclassifieds are. I don't know if that's maybe uh, – how, how do you determine unclassified? Does that, how can that be a hate crime if you can't have a way to classify it? Is it just was it a, like a white guy yelling at a black guy? And things got a little out of hand, even though it had nothing to do with race, and the police just wrote it up as a hate crime. Are they being pushed to raise these statistics? I don't know. Where am I at here? Oh, whatever. My point being, the cities are crazy. It's like Gotham City. It's like Mad Max out there. If you live in the cities and you can't get out, please be very careful. Because we're seeing craziness everywhere, which is going to take me to this story, which I saw the other day. Uh, and just hadn't got a chance to share with you folks, but here it is. Okay. He was crazy. He didn't even rob me. Victim of Chase ATM hatchet attack breaks down his horrifying photos reveal aftermath of bloody assault by Iraq vet who was never the same after the war. Miguel Solorzano, 50, had just gotten off his shift cooking meals at a luxury getaway on Governor's Island and went to deposit his check at a Chase Bank ATM on Broadway in My Manhattan's financial district. He didn't even rob me, Solorzano uh, told the Daily New York Daily News in Spanish on Wednesday. He took nothing. Nothing. He was crazy. He added, there were a lot of people in the street, and I yelled, help, help, help. Another person talked to the police, and another doctor came. 
Photos emerged on Thursday of the immediate aftermath of the assault as Solorzano sat covered in blood on the sidewalks while medics tended to him before he was put on a gurney and taken to the hospital. Police arrested 37-year-old Aaron Garcia in the, the attack um, late Tuesday night when they found him smashing car and storefront windows with a hammer. This guy just lost his mind and was just going out and just acting out against anyone and anything he could find. Look at that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Authorities said on Wednesday that Garcia is already wanted by Yonkers police who have an active arrest warrant out uh, on him for a February 15th assault and four active bench warrants for failure to appear in court. He had three prior arrests in 2020 stemming from charges of harassment, aggravated harassment, stalking, and criminal contempt, Yonkers police say. A close res relative who asked not to be named said Garcia has previously, previously served in the Army and was not the same after his re uh, return from deployment to Iraq, New York Daily News reported. Surveillance footage of the incident Sunday night, which I'll show you, but it's very graphic. Shows Solorzano at the ATM at around 5.20 p.m. When the suspect, later identified by police as Garcia, so it's not even dark outside yet, pulled out a hatchet from a dark bag and walks up behind him. Garcia of Yonkers then repeatedly hits Solorzano with the hatchet as the victim desperately tries to defend himself. So we're just going to go ahead and check out the footage. Now, it is very, very graphic. Uh, so if you have kids in the room or if you're just, you know, you have delicate sensibilities and can't stand to see graphic images. Now is the time to turn this off. There he is at the ATM. Look how creepy. He just looks around, stands there, and then whack! Can you imagine? You're just trying to deposit your check and go home after a long day of work. And a man with a hatchet comes out of nowhere and begins swinging wildly at you. Look at this. Can you imagine the thoughts going through the man's head right now? This is like a horror movie. Something he, you know, you would never expect that you would have to encounter when leaving your house. And then he smashes the ATMs. I guess at this point, Sir Lozano has escaped and walks out. Huh. Wow. So yeah, get out of the fucking cities. Watch your backs, folks. Take care of yourselves. Seriously. I'm, I'm being dead serious. To all those people, out, folks out there on the internet that I don't know that live in big cities, uh, be careful. Always be mindful. Don't walk around with your headphones in at night. Girls, I know you want to be treated like big boys and you don't want men looking out for you, but guess what? You're tinier and you're more vulnerable and these big crazy men will go after you. It, we're lucky that wasn't a young woman in that uh, vestibule because I don't think she'd, I don't think she'd be alive. All right, folks. Uh, again, just take care. Watch yourselves. Stay safe. God bless. Um, have a great Thursday, and uh, if I don't uh, talk to you guys tomorrow, then I'll see you on Sunday.